Welcome to my Kerker Lab for How We Are a Lava Burst. Together today with plants and other things. And for me, a first timer, Orchids at Home. Welcome Orchids at Home to the Kerker Lab initiative. I appreciate you taking the time to do this video as much as I appreciate plants and other things for already being an oldie but goldie with regards to the Kerker Lab. So here we are, this is my How We Are a Lava Burst. <laughs> Right? Okay, this is a miniature orchid, but it is not this miniature. Let's get into what happened here. I received this orchid and I immediately put it into my Lekka and Semi-Hydro setup. Tiny little eight centimeter pot and a mix of Lekka. I didn't distinguish between the sizes, large, small, didn't care. I put her in there and then she bloomed for me. And then things went south pretty quickly because I had to constantly miss the surface of the pot because of my dry top layer, which is a detriment to the orchid because of her tiny, tiny base. And she quickly deteriorated. Luckily, I had a conversation on some other orchid together with Michael McCarthy, who suggested I buy EpiWeb in order to solve a problem. And I said EpiWeb was too expensive so he suggested scotch bright scrubby pads, anything of the sorts. And here we are today. My How We Are a Lava Burst, just in time, maybe, is on a kitchen scrubby pad on what I call a Michael Mount. So there's just a little kind of a net structure in the back, which used to be a placemat for your dining table and a scrubby pad on top. And you can see how positively I am thinking by the size of the scrubby pad that this orchid is going to be fine and she is going to one day grow and enjoy the entire space that I made available for her. <laughs> yes, well, I didn't film the mounting of this orchid, but there's a whole playlist of the evolution of inorganic mounts on my channel and I will link a card if you're interested to have a look-see how things have evolved. So this scrubby pad is very dense, very fibrous and pa like packed. It's not as loose and aerated as the other material that I normally use, also for fine rooted orchids. But you can see here that I am getting somewhere. Something is working. At least I can tell something is working because she's still alive. She was dismal, pathetic, very shriveled. There was no gloss to her leaves at all when I mounted her and I really thought I was going to lose her. We're not out of the woods yet, but this is so much better than she was a year ago when I mounted her. So the playlist has a lot of my mounting going on. You can see that it literally only took one little bit of elastic thread to get her on the mount. The playlist has a lot of variety also with the hob material, but I can see roots growing and they're going down into the scrubby pad. And what I'm doing right now, hoping to tide her over, is to keep her in bright shade. She's not outside. She lives in my dining room, hanging over a humidity tray, which is also full. And then I missed the roots ever so often, now maybe twice a day, because of the heat and the hot breeze that comes into where she lives. So she dries out pretty fast and I missed her. Sometimes with just seaweed and calcium magnesium at 100 parts per million, mainly just with plain RO water. I don't want to tax these delicate roots until I do not see a lot more action going on, but I do mist at 6.3 pH when I apply my seaweed and my calcium magnesium. I make sure that I have 40 parts per million of seaweed and 60 parts per million of calcium magnesium to bring that solution to 100 parts per million in total. And I really want to just encourage a slight little bit of energy going in, pumping some of the hormones in, some of the growth hormones that the seaweed provides. There's a video coming on about that as well. But um, this little growth right here is new. And it's looking good, I think. And that's where all the roots are coming from. And I'm really, I'm encouraged by this. I am so tempted to pot her up 
again into semi-hydro, but with Akadama and terrarium grit, I'm going to hold off. I'm going to trust the process. I'm going to trust that she's doing well. I'm going to trust that this new growth here with its roots is going to be the foundation for things to come. But I make sure that this one is not exposed in its stress stage as it is right now to any, any of the harsh elements, including hot wind. If there is a really hot wind, which I've had a lot of recently, I close my terrace doors and make sure that she doesn't get burnt to a crisp because the dehydration through the leaves, it's a thing. It's a thing, especially when it's a rescue mode like this. So I do let her dry out in between mistings, but I make sure that the humidity around her is agreeable with the humidity tray underneath her. I'm not saying it cannot work in semi-hydro, but it has to be adapted. For my environment, if I were to put her back into semi-hydro, I would definitely use Akadama and Terrarium Grit. Classic semi-hydro setup, not self-watering, but something that is very water retentive. And then just cover the surface with the Terrarium Grit that won't make the base all wet and soggy. That's the only mistake I made with my attempt at semi-hydro. I wasn't respecting how tiny the base is. I thought that the top dry layer will also affect the base of the orchid, that is not the case. The constant misting that I had to do was a detriment to this orchid. So when she is up and running and back to size, she should be double the size. Yes, she's a miniature orchid, but <clears throat> not this tiny. She should be about, you know, double this growth, double the size is what her ideal growth size is. I hope to one day again see those beautiful fiery red little blooms. They're about the size of my thumbnail, they're not very large. When she bloomed for me the first time, I detected a fragrance of an old rose, a rose blossom that had just gone over and has that musty, you know, sort of still some kind of a floral fragrance, but it's going over. That's the fragrance I detected. It wasn't very strong, but there was a slight fragrance. So let's see, hopefully I have done this little one justice. I hope that she will bounce back. She is extremely stalled at this point in time, but she's looking a lot better on the leaf front than she did a year ago. So there is hope. There is hope. Thank you so much to Plants and Other Things, and thank you to Orchids at Home for joining me on this care collab. I'll be interested to see what your lava bursts look like, and I am going to definitely look forward to updating everybody on mine and be able to give some positive news updates, maybe in six months, maybe in another year, who knows? <laughs> Thank you everybody so very, very much for watching. I appreciate your time. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye. Bye.